Hey y'all, hi. So a couple of months ago, a few months ago, four months ago, I posted a video called I tried a strict minimalist wardrobe for one month. I was mostly talking about an aesthetically minimal wardrobe. I weeded everything out of my wardrobe that didn't fit sort of like a narrow definition of a minimal garment or a garment that could contribute to an aesthetically minimalist fashion look. But because of the number of things that I weeded out of my closet in order for it to fit those parameters, I ended up also experiencing experiencing for me a pretty hefty level of lifestyle minimalism as well with my wardrobe that month, meaning that I had fewer garments from which to choose and I was wearing a lot more of my clothes on rotation and repeating more outfits. At the end of that experimental month, spoiler alert in case you haven't seen that video, and, it, and I'll link it down below so that you can go watch it if you'd like to watch that before you watch this, which is an update on that video. At the end of the month, I was disinclined to bring back most of my more maximum or more splashy garments. I felt really happy both with my aesthetically minimal wardrobe and with my more streamlined wardrobe. I felt happier with fewer choices. So the outcome of that month, the conclusion of that video was that I brought back a few things that I had missed, diversified my wardrobe a little bit compared to what it had been during the month, but ultimately I continued the experiment. And now four months later, I'm reporting back about how it's going. If this is your first time to my channel, then I actually recommend watching the other video first. Again, I'll link it down below and I'll link it in the cards. I'll also tell you my name is Hannah and this channel is actually mostly a beauty channel. Reviewing makeup is my bread and butter. And I'm also just interested in aesthetics on a philosophic level. I also love fashion, style. I make some lifestyle content. I'm interested in minimalism. I personally prefer fewer, nicer things rather than too many choices. So my content does kind of like dip into this ideas space once in a while. If you enjoyed this video, and especially if you think you'd enjoy watching a variety of different kinds of content from me, I hope you'll subscribe. And now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. So as part of the conclusion of my first video about the minimal wardrobe experiment, I clarified the difference between lifestyle minimalism and aesthetic minimalism. I referenced it a little bit in the intro to this video, but I will re-explain again or re-clarify just so it's fresh in all of our minds. Lifestyle minimalism or adopting a minimalist lifestyle, it's just a matter of figuring out what really matters to you, what you really value, and getting rid of everything else. It doesn't really have anything to do with aesthetics, and there are plenty of people People who consider themselves minimalists, but they don't really care about the shape or genesis of their furniture or the physical quality of like the napkins on their dinner table. They don't necessarily feel more drawn to things that are considered aesthetically minimal than other things. In fact, some people are lifestyle minimalists, but aesthetically drawn to more maximalist things like print, bright colors, not the kinds of homewares and clothing that we think of when we think of minimalism. It doesn't matter what your stuff looks like. As long as you've whittled it down to what's essential to you, it's what people consider minimalism when it comes to the way you're living your life. Aesthetic minimalism has to do with the qualities of objects themselves, and it has to do with simplified design. So a piece of clothing is considered minimal if it downplays color and print in order for other qualities like silhouette and texture to be in the spotlight. And the same is true of other things than clothes. Clothing. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's no drama in the piece, whatever it is, piece of clothing or furniture. It's just that the drama tends to be about shape and materials rather than color and print. And just like you can be a lifestyle minimalist without having aesthetically minimal tastes, you can be an aesthetic minimalist without living a minimalist lifestyle. If you mostly like physical objects and clothing that fit the definition of aesthetic minimalism, but you prefer to have a whole bunch of stuff and you've filled your house with that stuff. As I said in the intro, my initial project here was one of aesthetic minimalism. I was just curious to know what it would be like to only have aesthetically minimalist choices for a month with my wardrobe. But I'm also really interested in lifestyle minimalism. I definitely experienced the benefits of both for that extreme month where I had whittled down my closet. And I definitely wanted to retain both or some version of both going forward. It wasn't just the aesthetics that felt like a good fit for me. 
So in this video, I'm going to address both how it's gone for me since that month long experiment in terms of the volume of what's in my closet. So that'll be sort of the lifestyle minimalism portion and how it has gone since that initial month in terms of style. And that'll be like the aesthetic minimalism portion. I'm gonna start with the first one in terms of volume. How is it going? The volume of my closet, the number of clothes that I have hanging in my closet. So for that experimental month, I whittled everything down. I lived with that whittled down wardrobe for a month. And then at the end of the month, the numbers swelled slightly as I invited some things back into my wardrobe that had been banished for maximalism during the month. And it didn't take very long for me to feel like the ranks had swelled a little bit too much. Like I kind of missed how very spare my closet was during that month for me. I mean, I know that it's all relative, but for me, it had felt like a lovely, refreshing edit. And though I was happy to have back some of my comfort pieces, and I was happy to invite back some color, like bubblegum pink, for example, I loved having fewer things during that month, and I kind of missed having as few things as I had once I got going again. So I've been doing this thing where once in a while, I go through and I temporarily banish all the clothes that I just don't feel like wearing right now. I've done it twice since filming that video. I've just kind of gone through and been like, not feeling it, not feeling it, not feeling it, like pulling things, whittling down my closet, just kind of on instinct. I find that some things go for practical reasons. They're not really seasonal. And some things I just am like, ugh, I'm not feeling you right now. I'm not getting rid of these things. I'm not selling them or donating them. I'm just putting them in storage for a little while where I still have easy access to them, but they're just kind of like out of sight and not part of the wardrobe with which I'm engaging like for that month or for those couple of months. And it's been great. So first of all, it's given me fewer choices on a daily basis, which is one of the things that I realize that I crave and feel satisfied by. But also when I switched them over, so I lived with my the swollen, slightly swollen edited wardrobe for a little while. Then I went through one day and I did this put the stuff away. And a month or two later, I came back and I got the banished stuff out of banishment and I kind of switched it out. So I put some of it back in the closet and I went through and did another cull and I banished some new things. When I was doing that switch over, I came across some things that I'd banished that I realized I did want to declutter, that I was just ready to let go. Their time out of sight, out of mind had allowed me to kind of detach and get clarity and those declutter decisions were really easy. It hasn't been a very organized strategy Strategy. I've just done it on instinct. I've done it when I feel like I need a change. I think there's something to be said for that because overspending, going on a spending spree, just falling down the rabbit hole of late night scrolling, feeling like you need something new, like you have nothing to wear. A lot of times, at least for me, that comes from just wanting a change, like wanting to shake things up a little bit, wanting to feel a little bit of a refreshed version of myself or my life or my, my closet. I've been able to achieve that just by putting some things away randomly and then getting them back out again. And when things come out, it's like, oh, you, I'm happy to see you. It's like everything banished is new again, you know? It's worked out really well as a way of retaining that edited closet, that sense of fewer, nicer things without having to go through the major stress of a huge declutter where I make the executive decision to part with a whole bunch of clothes. It's also been an enjoyable process every time. And I'll probably continue to do it for the foreseeable future. Another thing I've noticed is that I like, as I've said, having less stuff. And no matter how much I whittle down my wardrobe during a declutter or during one of these banishment culls, there are still always garments left hanging there in my wardrobe that don't get worn or that rarely get worn. To me, it's important not to put pressure on myself about that. I am trying not to feel like there's something wrong with having some pieces that don't get culled and don't de get decluttered and also don't really get worn. I'm not obsessed with stringently whittling and decluttering all the way down to a tight capsule where everything is in heavy rotation. And I do subscribe to the part of Marie Kondo's philosophy that says that it makes sense to keep something if it sparks joy, even if it doesn't necessarily get a lot of use. Things can spark joy for reasons other than use value. And that is the case with a lot of my slightly more formal pieces of clothing. I really love them. They make me happy every time I see them, but I might go through an entire year just wearing that one really beautiful silk blouse like only once. That's okay with me. The more interesting thing about 
this, the thing of which I've taken note is that there's seemingly no limit to the feeling of being happier with less. It's like I haven't yet reached a point where my desire to edit my closet or my act of editing my closet cancels out the sense of abundance. And in a sense, having those things there that are beautiful but that aren't getting worn all the time contributes to that sense of abundance. And having those things there makes it easier to resist the urge to buy more, knowing that even with an edited version of my closet, there are still things hanging there that spark joy, but that don't get much use. It makes me feel full and less prone to launch on endless searches for more clothes. Ideally, I think over time as I banish and unbanish things and do some actual declutters, ideally I would say whittle it down a little bit more, but I'm happy for that process, that whittling process to happen slowly over time. It doesn't have to happen all at once. So let's move on to talking about aesthetic minimalism. How have I been feeling about my closet in terms of style over the last four months? I've got to say, I still feel very aligned with my personal version of aesthetic minimalism that emerged from that initial experiment. And again, it really does have to do with minimizing color variety in a piece of clothing and in a, an outfit and minimizing print in order for other dramatic elements to have the spotlight, elements like silhouette and texture. And in some cases, color, but it just tends to be one color or at most two colors at a time. I still don't miss my busy prints. I don't know what to tell you. I just don't miss them. I have added a little bit more color variety, uh, notably a bright blue sweater that feels like a power color to me because it's so opposite of everything else in my wardrobe color. Otherwise, I really tend towards the warmth, the terracotta, the reds, and so this blue just stands out like a beacon. But I find myself wearing a lot of monochromatic outfits, as I said, and rarely combining more than two colors in an outfit, and I would say never more than three colors in an outfit, and I'm super happy with that. Getting dressed is much easier than it used to be, still. I feel chic and comfortable in what I'm wearing essentially all of the time, which didn't used to be the case. I used to often go out on on a limb and then not quite regret it, but also not feel chic and comfortable, you know? Overall, I would say that getting dressed in the morning is taking up less brain space, which is wonderful, but also bringing me more pleasure and confidence since I embraced aesthetic minimalism as a guideline. I also find, and this I think should come as no surprise, that embracing this guideline is really helping me with my goal of buying less clothing in the year of 2023. I'm no longer tempted by anything that falls outside my general aesthetic guidelines. So there's just a huge percentage of clothing that isn't hard to resist buying at all. It's just not on the table. It's like not up for consideration. There is a lot of really beautiful clothing on the market that's aesthetically minimal. But what I found is that something that I'm tempted to buy that's aesthetically minimal is more likely to be aesthetically similar to something that I already own. Like I might come across a stunning sweater brand that I've never heard about and be tempted by a beautiful black v-neck sweater. But I already have have a black v-neck sweater. I might get caught by an Instagram ad for the perfect white tee, but I already have a white tee that I like well enough, and it's just way easier to resist those things, even though they are kind of promising to be optimal versions of a thing I already have, because it's a version of a thing I already have. It's so much easier to resist than it was when I was being caught by Instagram ads for like printed blouses and dresses and elaborately designed things that always looked really exciting and different compared to the clothing that I already owned. So over time, I'm finding, once again, that aesthetic minimalism, even though it's not the same thing, has a way of gently fostering lifestyle minimalism. I had started to think about this at the end of that initial experimental month, and it has definitely continued to feel true to me and revealed itself to be even more true to me over time. So that's everything. That's what's going on right now. But this experiment is constantly evolving. I'm not trying to push myself into anything specific, and I have no idea what will happen next. I'm especially curious to find out how my handful of formerly precious printed sundresses will fare when the weather changes and I unpack them from storage. Will I want to wear them? Like, will I hate them? It's a little bit hard to tell. I think I won't know until it happens. So I'll 
I'll be following my future career closely and I will definitely report back to you later in the year. Thank you as always for being so wonderful, for watching, for being subscribed, those of you who are subscribed, for commenting, for liking my videos, all of that makes a big difference to me. And I really hope that you're remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Thank you